Hello guys, this is Dr. Possibility from Excel Academy. Please welcome to my part 2 of final exam preparation. And in this video, I'm going to explain concept from uh, finding the maximum and minimum values and also be able to use the first principle and also trigonometry and more and more questions. So, let me quickly go to the question. The first question is saying, let f of x be equal to negative that and that. Find the maximum or the minimum point of f of x. So when you are asked the maximum or minimum point, what does this mean? So the maximum or minimum point, when they tell you this, it also means that they are asking you to find the stationary point, okay? So you are asked to to find also the stationary point. They are one and the same, okay? And then the same thing, when you are asked, it also means to find the what the turning point, which is just the TP. Okay, so many students ask me, how can you solve this? So there are three methods you can use to solve this one. Both, all of them, they'll give you the same answer. But you need to make sure that you know which method should be used first. So in this case, you need to look, are you able to find the X component using product sum factors, okay? So if you look at this, the equation is Y is equal to negative 2X squared plus 11X minus 15. So the question should be, are you able to find the product sum and factor? So the product is that times that which is just 30 and when you talk of the sum you just get that value which is 11 and when you get the the factors which is 6 and 5 these guys will give us 30 when you multiply and they will give us 5 or 11 when you add them okay so after doing that then you can factorize there so you can say y is equal to negative 2 x squared plus 6x right plus 6x then you can say plus 5x minus what 15 okay so from there we need to factorize by grouping we can factorize by grouping whereby we say y is equal to a negative 2x and this will give us x minus 3 and then there you're going to say 5 and it will give you x minus what t 3 okay so that's what we have uh gotten after doing that so you can easily uh group those two so y is equal to you can say uh neg 2x plus 5 open cross bracket and x minus three okay so that's what we have had here so to find the x component the x intercept okay to find the x intercept we know that y has to be equal to yt zero so we are just going to say negative two um we're just going to say negative two x negative two x plus five and then x minus 3 is equal to 0. So if we work out, you're going to find that x, if we work out those guys, those two guys. Okay. Um, let me quickly go down. So if you work out those guys, you're going to find that negative 2, uh, I don't know why, but I feel my, okay. Negative 2x plus 5 is equal to zero and you're going to find that x minus three is also equal to zero please don't mind my handwriting so x is equal to five over two and x is equal to three so those are the x intercept of that equation so when you talk of the y intercept when you talk of the y intercept, we have been given that y is equal to negative 2x, negative 2x squared plus 11x minus 
15. So to find the y intercepts, you just put 0 on e, uh, x. So that will give us negative 15. Okay, negative 15. All right, so the y intercepts is mostly the constant number. Now, since we have found uh, the y intercept and the x intercept, which will be used in the second part of the question. So the next, the question, the main question is saying, find uh, the maximum or minimum value. So we still have y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 11x minus 15. So let's look for, for, for the what? For the turning point. So because we are able to use the product sum factor we can just easily use dy dx which is the shortest of them all so dy dx of that that times that is going to be negative four then that minus one is going to give us one uh, one and then plus 11 okay this when you derive it it's going to be zero so what are we supposed to know? We know that at the turning point, at the turning point, dy dx is equal to what? So zero. So dy dx is equal to zero. So since dy dx is equal to zero, we can simply say negative four x plus eleven is equal to what? Zero. All right. So working out that is going to give us x is equal to eleven over what 4 x is equal to 11 over 4 so knowing that x is equal to 11 over 4 as our x component okay then we can easily look for the y component of the turning point so the y component of the turning point will still get the original equation which is that the original equation which is that so when we work out uh, that one we can easily replace where there is x we put 11 over 4 so y is equal to negative 2 oh sorry y is equal to negative 2 open bracket 11 over 4 squared and then plus 11 then we say 11 over 4 and then we say minus 15 okay so having that in mind we can simply work out these guys so when we work out these guys we're going to say y is equal to negative 2 times 11 which is 121 over 16 right and then plus 11 times that it's 120 uh it's 121 11 times 11 is 121 so we are going to have 120 1 over 4 minus 15 okay minus 15 so 15 is just alone it's not being affected so from this point we can easily see that uh that's two there are two into two in one two into that one it is easy simply 8 so after doing that we can simply work out that expression so we are saying y is equal to 121 negative over 8 plus 121 over 4 minus what 15 okay so that's what we have gotten ladies and gentlemen so what's remaining what's remaining if at all we have that so the only thing which can happen next is by working out those guys as a fraction okay working out those guys as a fraction so this will be y is equal to a common denominator it is eight and then you say 8 into that, it's that. So 121. Then this is 2. So plus 242. And then minus. So you say 15 times 8. 15 times 8. 
which is just giving you 120 okay so when you work out the the numerator nicely and you are going to find that y is equal to um 1 over 8 okay so that is our y okay so meaning what is our maximum value or what is our turning point so our turning point will simply be equal to open 11 over 4 comma what comma 1 over 8 that's surely our turning point okay so now the question is let's now sketch so this is the uh, minimum value this is the minimum value minimum value okay so this is the minimum value of that expression so let me now go back a bit and look for what i had to find okay so what i had to find was the what i had to find was that the x intercept the x intercept was um was x is equal to 5 over 2 and 3 okay so uh now i can sketch the graph so the x intercept which i found with you guys was x is equal to 5 over 2 and also x is equal to 3 all right so i'm sure my 3 there is invisible but i can just simply erase and write it properly then this is my x intercept so what about my y intercept my y intercept was uh y is equal to negative what uh 15 negative 15. okay so after doing that i can easily use these values to sketch the graph okay i can easily use these values to sketch the graph okay so let me quickly sketch our graph let me quickly sketch our graph which is not a big deal okay so our graph we know that every graph has the y axis don't mind how 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 bent my line is and also the x axis so you have the y axis and also the x axis okay so what are the points that's another question we need to ask ourselves so the first point is two two there five over two and e three okay five over two and e three so if we were to plot this graph we also have the turning point so the turning point the x part was um, 11 over 4 the x part was 11 over 4 and the y part was 1 over 8 okay so when you talk of the turning point the turning point will surely be here the turning point will surely be there okay so then the y intercept is somewhere there the y intercept is somewhere there which is negative 15 so negative 15 is going to be written somewhere there which is negative 15 make sure that you write these points okay so the next thing you have to do is just to sketch this graph this is sketching so it's going to go like that when it reaches there it makes a turn it goes down and it goes like that so after that please don't forget one thing which is the the y intercept so the y intercept was that and that and then once you do that you name the graph the graph is y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 11x minus 15. nothing more nothing less than you are done so actually when marking uh, 
the the man who can be marking or woman he just has to see your graph just by looking at your graph then i can mark that question of yours okay so let me go to the next question please as i go to the next question make sure that you subscribe to this channel which is here to help you get ready of your exam so let's quickly go back and look at question two so for question two it's quite easy and i'm pretty sure a majority of you can do it so differentiate the function just from the first principle so this is something that is just dealing with you following the instruction so the instruction is clear you use the first principle to solve that expression okay so um let me quickly write down the expression so you have been given f of x is equal to 1 over x so you have been asked to use the first principle okay so from the first principle you know dy dx which can also be said as f complement of f of x is simply equal to f x plus h x plus h um minus f of x over h okay so uh please don't forget to put the limits there lim h approaches zero okay so that's what we have been given so let's quickly look at our expression so it's all about replacing where there is x you put x plus h where there is x you put what x plus c h so from what we have which is um f is equal to one over x we can simply say f complement of x is simply equal to a lim okay h approaches zero then you can say one over x plus h minus one over x and then over what h okay so that's what we have there so uh it's very hard to work out something in this form so since these are fraction and that are fractions so this can also be written as f complement of x is equal to lim h approaches zero then you can simply say one over x plus h minus one over x cross bracket divided by h okay so we have that guys so when we have that now it's very easy for us to understand from that point of view so from there we are saying f complement of x which is the same as dy dx is equal to lim h approaches zero so at this point we can find the common denominator so the common denominator is x plus h and what x so this into that it is that so when you work out that this guy into that it is that so you're going to have x times that it is x the minus from there you see this into that it is that minus x plus h then open bracket or open bracket and close bracket times 1 over h so when this sign here changes okay when the division sign here when the division sign here changes to multiplication usually going to have the reciprocal of h okay so from there guys this is a little bit easy if not easy uh, for you to work out there so we can easily work out there by simply saying f of x complement is equal to lim you can say h approaches zero so you work out the denominator or the numerator which is x minus times uh, x it's negative x negative times uh, h it's negative h over you know there is going to be x plus h 
and then x there and then times 1 over h okay so we have that we have that so what are we going to do if at all we have that what are we going to do if at all we have that so you know this and that they'll go if those guys can go like that then that simply means that we are now having f complement of x lim h approaches zero is equal to negative h over you can say x uh, squared by multiplying that by that plus h x okay and then dot one over h okay so if you look at that you can easily work it out h there one h there uh, one okay so we have that so when we do that we're just simply going to have something like this we're just simply going to have something like this so if we work it out we are going to find that um, f complement of x is simply equal to lim h approaches 0 negative 1 over x squared plus h x. So since we have found that, when we have found that, the best way now is just to put where there is h, we put a 0. So f complement of x is just simply equal to lim h approaches 0 negative 1 over x squared because we know when 0 is there 0 times x it is just um it is just um 0 so we have that so if we can have that that simply means that uh our dy dx, our dy dx, which is dy dx, is simply equal to negative 1 over x squared. So then you have used the first principle to work out that. Okay. So um, after that, let me go to question three please as we go to question three make sure that you subscribe make sure that you subscribe okay so let's quickly go back and do question two so um question two is all about calculus and you need to expect it in your exam or in your test so um the question is a little bit easy but it just needs some comb uh, some rules to be applied so we have y is equal to x cos our uh, open bracket 3x squared plus 1 okay so this is what we have so from here you're going to discover that uh, it is a combination of so many rules that we need to look at. So we need to look at this guy is totally independent from this other guy. So this guy is also alone, okay? But if you look what is com um, what is connecting these two guys, it is a, a, a multiplication, meaning these two guys, you need to use the product okay so we can simply work out this by doing the following so we can say uh, we can say um, let me go down so you can say let's Q be equal to X and um, and V be equal to cos uh, 3 x squared plus one okay cos three x squared plus one okay so from there now we can easily work it out so let's first work out q uh, so we are going to have dq dx is just 
simply equal to 1 okay dq dx is simply equal to 1 but look at v so for us to find v v is more like um something that is complex so we need to use the chain rule to work out that so we can say let u be equal to 3x squared plus what plus 1 let u be equal to 3x squared plus 1 then we know that if that's the case then v will be equal to cos u okay v will be equal to cos u so from that we can simply work out something from that we can simply work out something so we can say dv du is just simply equal to which is negative sine u okay negative sine u all right and then if we work out the other friend which is uh u so du du for this one du dx is just equal to 6x okay du dx is simply 6x okay so we can simply write that down so i can just say and du dx is simply equal to 6x okay so after doing that we are using the chain rule to work out dv dx so what is dv dx so dv dx okay dv dx is just simply equal to dv du dot du dx okay dot du dx so once we do that we have already found uh we have already found uh the guy uh dv du and du dv so this means that this guy is equal to negative sine u dot what 6x negative sine u dot 6x okay so what are we simply saying what we are simply saying is that uh, dv dv dx dv dx is equal to negative 6x sine u okay now in our expression we don't need a u we need an x so we need to go back on top and replace u with what we had so you find that what we had was 3x squared plus 1 that was our u 3x squared plus 1 so where there is u we are going to put that so dv dx is simply equal to negative 6x sine then open bracket 3x squared plus 1 okay so that's what we surely have so if we have that then we are saying we are using the product rule so since we are using the product rule we are multiplying the derivative of this times that and then also the derivative of that times that so if we multiply one by that it's going to give you that guy in red so in short dy dx dy dx is simply equal to cos okay because that one one we have multiplied one just for the sake of someone one cos 3x squared plus one then we get that derivative of um v which is negative 6x sine 3x squared plus 1 dot x okay so if we work out that if we work out that what are we going to have so what we are just simply going to have is uh dy dx is equal to cos uh, open bracket 3x squared 
plus 1 cross bracket minus 6 x squared sine uh, 3 x squared plus 1 okay so guys this is the derivative of our question there is nowhere we can go and there is nothing we can simplify so this was the answer for that question okay please guys as we go to the next question make sure that you subscribe to our channel okay so um let's quickly go to question three two let's go to question three two so when we go to question three two they are asking us to do the same thing they are asking us to do the same thing dy dx so what is the function what is the function okay so the function is y is equal to in then open bracket x cubed minus 2x squared okay so that is our um that is our expression okay so for us to work out this one you need to know that uh the only thing that we know is uh dy dx dy dx of in x is 1 over x okay but we don't have something like that so because we don't have that and that makes this expression to be um to be complex so we're going to use the chain rule so we are just simply going to say let u be equal to x cubed minus 2x squared okay then what are we having we're going to have y is equal to in u okay y is equal to in u so when we have that we can easily work out that okay we are just going to use the chain rule nothing more on this question so if we were to find du dx if we were to find du dx we are going to find that it's going to be 3x squared minus 4x okay and if we were to find dy dx of uh, that so dy du if we were to find dy du dy du would be 1 over what u okay so after doing that after doing that the next thing is us now to uh, is us now to work out that so when we work out that we can say dy dx is simply equal to you multiply uh, du dx okay you multiply du dx by d, dy du okay you multiply those guys so when you multiply those guys what are you having so when we multiply there we are simply having something like this so we are having dy dx is equal to uh, 3x squared minus 4x times 1 over u times 1 over u okay so when we work out that we're going to discover that dy dx is simply equal to 3 x squared minus 4x over u okay so we said that u is equal to um x cubed minus 2x squared okay so we are just going to replace u with what we stated we're just going to replace u with what we stated so dy dx will simply be equal to 3x squared minus 4x minus 4x. All right, I think there my handwriting has gone wrong. So minus 4x over u, which we found to be x cubed minus 2x squared. So that is our dy dx for that question.
which is very easy for everyone or if you want you can write f complement of x f complement of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x over x cubed um, over x cubed x cubed minus 2x squared all right so i think that's all for this question so let me just quickly go to the next question so looking at time looking at time i'm going to give you this one as your assignment looking at time i'm going to give you this one as assignment so just find dy dx of sine then you also find dy dx of the numerator then all you need now is just to use the the quotient rule and you'll be able to find the solution so let's look at the last question which is uh, using trigonometric um, graphs so we are going to graph this curve um, this curve which is under trigonometry so in the meantime i would invite you guys and encourage you guys to subscribe to this channel because we will soon start posting videos in anatomy um in biology in in biochemistry physiology and other programs okay so please subscribe and register with us okay so let me quickly look at the last question in today's class so um let me quickly um work it out okay so the first thing as usual i'm going to write the the equation we have been given which is y is equal to one minus three sine uh, 2x plus pi okay all right so um most of the time they'll ask you to find the amplitude the period and the phase shifts okay so those are the three things that you are mostly asked but in most cases you find that those things they also need to to know the 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 vertical shifts okay so from here this question this equation can be simplified as y is equal to 1 minus 3 sine okay so you factorize 2 because um normally x is not supposed to have a coefficient so you can factorize 2 when you factorize 2 you're going to simply have a 2 outside there so when you have a 2 outside there then these guys you're going to say x plus you divide this pi by 2 it's going to be a uh, pi over 2 like that okay so my 2 is uh bent so i'll relate it properly so pi over 2 like that okay so we have found or we have simplified that expression we have simplified that expression so if we have simplified that expression so what are we supposed to do next okay so according to your lecture your tutor or anyone so you find that these they assign it as a this one as your b this one as your c and this one as your d okay so let's quickly look at what we need to look at so the first thing we need to look at is the period okay period so the period is equal to 2 pi over b okay so what is our b our b is what our b is 2 so it's 2 pi over 2 and the answer is simply pi okay so the answer is just pi so pi 
that's our um, our period then let's look at the amplitude okay so when you look at the amplitude when you look at the amplitude the amplitude is just the modulus of what a and the modulus of a is simply negative three and the answer is just the three that's the amplitude okay so let's look at the phase shift so the phase shift is positive 2 okay which is on c okay so if you look at the phase shift phase shift the phase shift is just the modulus of what c okay so in this case it is pi over 2 okay which is just pi over 2 that's your phase shift ladies and gentlemen so from there from the first shift you now need to look at the direction you now need to look at the direction okay so you look at the direction how um how are you going to move so when you look at the direction because this guy is naked is positive since c is what greater than zero or we say since pi over 2 we say since c is greater than 0 or pi over 2 is greater than 0 you move to the opposite direction so you move you move to the left to the left okay sorry guys for my handwriting okay right so you move to the left so since you are moving to the left now we can easily sketch the graph so now we can easily sketch the graph okay so let me quickly go up and check out what we have simply uh, found so i've simply found the first shift the period and the guys so the only thing remaining is us now to look for um is us now to look for the graph sketching the graph okay so that's my last task for today and i hope you guys are going to subscribe to the channel so you have the x-axis and you have the um y axis there okay so the first thing you need to understand is how does the move how does the curve of sine move how does the curve of sine move so the curve of sine is something that moves like that okay so when you draw that when you draw that when you draw that like that okay and then this side it will also continue going like that it will also continue going like that so this is the curve of what sign this is the curve of sign so even there it will continue like that okay even that side it will continue like that so this is the normal curve of sign but what we have been given is some simply something that has ended on e pi so the period is ending on e pi so meaning this guy here this guy here this guy here is going to be what pi this guy will be equal to pi if this is pi then that is pi over 2 if that is pi then that is pi over 2 okay so this sum applies to there so there it will be negative pi and there it will be negative pi over 2 okay negative pi over 2 so that's what we have now we need to look at the phase shift so this is our pi this is our pi okay this is our our sine theta so this is our sine 2 theta okay so from there now what we now need to draw is uh, what we now need to indicate is the amplitude so i'll go up there and check the amplitude so the amplitude is three 
So the amplitude is simply 3. So since it's 3, I can put a 3 there and a negative 3 there. Okay. So upon doing that, upon doing that, what are we supposed to do next? So what we need to do next is just to simply make the phase shift to the left. We make the phase shift to the left. So if we were to get this point, okay, if this point was to move, it's going to move somewhere there. Okay? If this point was to move, it's going to move somewhere there. And then if this other friend of ours here was to move, it will surely occupy that space there. It will surely occupy that space. That same applies with the other friend there. So if this other friend here was to move, it will surely occupy that portion there. And then there is another guy who is somewhere here. When this guy was to move, it will surely occupy that position there. So how is the curve coming out? How is the curve coming out? So the curve is coming out something like that. The curve is coming out something like that. So this is the curve when we do the what? The phase shift. This is the curve when we do the phase shift. Mind you, I need to consider the... I need to consider... I need to consider the limits. But in this case, I'm generally explaining. Then I'll put the, the limits later. So from here, this is the amplitude. This is our curve, okay? This is our curve. So our curve has flipped, okay? So let me quickly redraw this same curve on another part. Let me quickly draw this curve on another part. Part, okay so if you look at the curve we have found the curve we have found it is something that is going like that okay it is something that is going like that okay it's going 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 going, going like that all right let me just draw it properly so it's something that is going in this way that it goes down up that down down okay then this side it is behaving in the same manner okay in the same manner like that and then this side it's going like that so it's behaving in the same manner so this curve i have drawn this curve i have drawn it is for what see? three sine uh two x plus what t pi this is the one i've drawn so there i have to put a three there i have to put a negative three all right um yeah so if i have done this if i have done this so this guy was just there this guy had no face shift this guy so meaning this guy was just simply 3 sine uh, 2x, 3 sine 2x, okay. So from there now, I have drawn that. Now I need to go back to the equation and look for what the question is asking me to. So, um, so you find that this equation, this question is having a negative on this part. This equation is having a negative on that part, okay? So since this guy is having a negative on that part, this simply means that um, things will automatically change, okay? Since there is a negative meaning, we now need to reflect, okay? We now need to reflect that expression, that equation. So meaning this graph, instead of like that, because now there is a negative there, it's going to reflect, okay? So it's going to reflect in such a way that it's going to go like that because it has changed, it has reflected. So it's now need to reflect 
go like that, go like that, go like that, and then go like that. Okay. So because it has what? It has reflected. So what I've drawn here is just negative 3 sine uh, 2x plus what? Pi. Okay. So there we go. So this guy now, it has been reflected. This guy has been reflected because of the negative. So from here, now, the next thing you can do is just simply um is just simply making the vertical shift so it's very easy for our guy there the vertical shift it is one okay the vertical shift it is one so we are moving one step upwards one step upward okay so since we are moving one step upwards that simply means that um that simply means that this on these three you're adding one step upward which will be four and this will go upward which will be negative two okay and then we also need to consider the range we have been given in the question which is negative pi to pi which is a very good thing okay so from here ladies and gentlemen we can now simply work out our final graph okay so the final graph it will surely have the y and the x okay the y and x axis so from that we have found that our graph is going to be like this it's going to be like that and then it goes down then this side it will go because it is up to pi it's going to be like that and then it goes down so here it's going to be pi negative and there it's going to be pi positive which is just pi and then there it's going to be pi over 2 of which this one will be pi over 4 and then up 3 pi over 4 sorry and then there is going to be pi over 4 and then here these same values they will repeat themselves pi over 4 negative then negative pi over 2 then negative 3 pi over 4 like that okay so what about our our amplitude which is the same three but since we have moved upward there it will be four and there it will be negative uh two so this is now the curve one minus sine uh open brackets two x plus pi all right i think ladies and gentlemen this was an involving question and a question that has exhausted much of our time so in order for you to get in touch of me please you can whatsapp me on that line on nine six five eight eight seven four seven four please if you have a question especially submission of this assignment i've given you please i'm asking you to submit that so that i'll be able to assess your work so i've given you an assignment to submit this um to submit the guy i have marked there so please make sure that you submit the work so in the meantime guys this was one of the longest lecture class i have i've spent uh 55 minutes on it thank you very much please subscribe my name is dog possibility and i'll always be here to give you the best services ever thank you